Okay, so today is Sunday, um, April 8th, and my son is about an hour, hour and a half away from getting his um, blessing, becoming an elder. That's what it is. He's becoming an elder. Um, so to get my mind off of that, I thought I would share some out of this book, um, The Wonders of the Human Body by George Carey. Um, it's like his book, The Tree of Life, but even more in depth. Um, so I just want to share some thoughts out of it. Um, the introduction, he's talking about, somebody wrote the introduction talking about George Carey. So they're talking about it as the author. Um, the author of this work has found the key and he has turned it erect and unafraid for he has nothing to lose or to gain. He reverently offers you that which you are seeking. He does not claim to be the only one who has discovered the key, but working along the lines hinted at by some modern and many ancient seekers, he hereby presents the results of his many years of scientific research. He shows that the correct translations of the Greek and Hebrew scriptures plainly state that all the allegories and fables of these works refer to actual, physical, physiological facts. And the statements, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all things shall be added unto you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. And be ye therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, can be physiologically and chemically explained. And then jumping to the foreword, which is by the author, he says, um, that he, I'm just going to sum, um, he published The Tree of Life, a book on the marvels of the human body and physical regeneration as taught in Greek and Hebrew texts from which the English Bible was translated. The book aroused such interest that the edition was virtually sold out in less than a year. This was written in 1918, so 100 years ago. The Wonders of the Human Body, which is this book that I'm reading from, may be termed an enlarged edition of the Tree of Life containing more than double the amount of information. Many more Bible witnesses have been called to the stand than were heard in the Tree of Life to testify to the truths of Scripture and to prove that the Greek and Hebrew writings were based in truths of chemistry and physiology. This book was not compiled for the purpose of antagonizing so-called Christians. It was written to prove the truths of the fables, parables, and splendid allegories, such as the book of Job and Revelation, with a firm faith that truth will triumph and at last lead the world to peace. That was written September 7th, 1918. Um, and this book, some were pieces of it were written in 1917, 1918. Some were as early as 1913 because um, it's a compilation of things. Um, so we're going to jump right in to the chrism. Um, the, what he explains as the tree of life is the vagus nerve as it comes down um, and into the lungs and spreads out into the intestinal area. That is the tree of life. And this seed that is born is the fruit of the tree that we can eat either for good or for evil. Um, so reading on page 16, he says, In every brain there are dormant cells waiting for the coming of the bridegroom. The vibration of the air age, the age of Aquarius, which is what we're in right now, um, the Christ, the oil, the substance that will resurrect them. Everywhere we have evidence of the awakening of the dormant brain cells. Scientists have discovered that there are dormant or undeveloped brain cells in countless number, especially in the cerebrum, the upper brain, the seat of the moral faculties, or more definitely speaking, the key, which when touched with the vital force set free through the process of physical regeneration by saving the seed and by the baptism in the ointment, the chrism, the Christ, 
in the spinal cord, which lifts the crucified substance wasted by the prodigal son in riotous living up to the most high brain. Um, this procedure causes the dormant cells, little buds, to actually bloom. The simile is perfect. The cells, while dormant, are like a flower yet in bud. When the substance that is needed for their development reaches them through physical regeneration, as outlined in the plan of salvation, that's in quotes, um, meaning the plan of salvation, um, the journey of the seed, um, which is fully explained in part two of this book. The cells bloom and then vibrate at a rate that causes the consciousness of new birth. Um, and that's all I'm going to reiterate there in that section. Bear with me. I did mark these. Well, I have so many pages marked that it's I had to stick extra. Okay. So this is also referred to as the secret secretion. Um, and he just explains that a little bit. I want to read this paragraph. He says, the word secret, this is on page 106. So uh, the word secret is derived from secretions. The upper brain, the cerebrum, contains the secretions, gray matter, creative, or that creates, builds and supplies all the life force of the human temple which is the soul of man, which is Solomon's temple. That's us. Solomon's temple is talking about us. Um, and then the, he says this little piece about prayer, which I'm going to do a separate video about because he has a lot in here about it. But um, the cerebellum is his throne where God creator within us sits. The cerebellum is his throne. Prayer or de desires expressed by man in the cerebellum for righteousness is answered in the cerebrum. Thus, by prayer to God within, and in no other way can man overcome the adversary or the carnal mind, which is an en en enmity to God. Um, I'm going to do a whole another video about prayer and photons and light and how this all works. Um, so skipping again. Okay, we're skipping to talking about the oil. Um, no, that's not where I want to go. Okay, we're going to go to this one. Page 123. Um, so in my last video, I said that the seed was born both in Bethlehem and at the same time as being crucified or sitting in the tomb for the two and a half days that the moon is in your sun sign. This, what I'm going to read next is where I got that from. I really didn't understand that part of the process until I read this book. Um, so starting on page 123. Every 28 and one half days when the moon is in the sign of the zodiac that the sun was in at the birth of the native, you, there is a seed or psychophysical germ born in or out of the solar plexus, which is the manger. And this seed is taken up by the nerves or the branches of the pneumogastric nerve and becomes the fruit of the tree of life or the tree of good and evil. Good if saved and cast upon the waters, which is circulation, good that it reaches your blood and circulates, and reaches the pineal gland, and evil if eaten or consumed in sexual expression on the physical plane, or by alcoholic drinks, or gluttony that causes fermented acid, and even alcohol in the intestinal tract. Thus no drunkard can enter the kingdom of heaven, for acids and alcohol cut or chemically split the oil that unites with the mineral salts in the body, and thus produces the monthly seed." Um, okay, this is the paragraph. The seed born every 28 and one half days, making 13 in 365 days, that is 13 months, remains two and one half days in Bethlehem, the house of bread, 
which is the solar plexus. Then is carried up pneumogastric or vagus, gas, vagus nerve and across the medulla oblongata and enters the cerebellum to remain two and a half days. Thus, where there was, oh, that's, my daughter scribbled. I have to just show you. My daughter scribbled in my book. I'm so not happy. So she scribbled over her, like the most important paragraph to me. Um, but so it, the, my point is here, he's saying that it sits both in Bethlehem for two and a half days and it sits in the tomb after it's crossed the Ida and Pingala nerves for two and a half days and reached the optic thalamus. Um, so to me, that made a lot of sense when I read that because it's a cycle, it's a loop. So just as one seed is dying on the cross, another seed is being born. So we're never without that process going on, um, which is also another beautiful thing because you're never without that chance to do it right again. Um, I talked about it in January. I totally wasted the seed and um, had a completely different experience than the first two months I had been practicing this. And that, that was a good thing for me to see the difference. And then February... I followed the rules and, and did what I could. And then I've had two moon times in Virgo in the month of March. So I've done this a total of six times. I've done this almost a half a year now. April will mark my halfway, halfway point through the year. And there's always another chance to, to get it right. And um, I think that's what's so beautiful about it. It doesn't... Um, you know, you can so-called fail, sin, or consume the seed, but there's another one coming up right after it. Um, and that just reminded me of something that I wanted to see if I can find to share. It'll take me a second to flip through because I seriously have... Okay. Um, so talking about this good and evil. Um, and has the dream of good and evil any better foundation than has this one of material evolution? We are here to solve the problems of life, not to evade them, and to name the mighty operations of eternal wisdom, good and evil, is simply evading instead of solving. The universal principle, spirit or God, is impartial. Saint and sinner are one in the eternal mind of God, or infinite life is not in the least injured by so-called good or evil. The spiritual ego, spirit is what I call that when they talk about the ego, is the interested party and must work out its own salvation. There is no point in the universe better, higher, or nearer God or the center than any other point. All places are necessary and no one is favored over any other. As Huxley well said, good and evil are opposite poles of the same absurdity. Good must have evil for its opposite, if it exists at all. He who would realize, he who would realize being must get rid of the concept of good as well as the concept of evil. Good and evil are qualifications, and being, human beings, does not admit of qualifications or grades. It simply is. The ideal we call good eternally exists, but its name is wisdom's operations. Nothing is low or high, good or bad, except to the individual concept that allows comparison. Um, that balance of light and dark. Um, coming out of the Mormon religion, everything was so black and white. And to realize that good and evil are on just opposite poles of the same, the same thing. They're just two ends of a stick. You pick up a stick, you get both ends of it. Um, and there's good and evil within everyone. It's what we choose. Um, and someone who is on this path wanting to preserve the oil 
living a righteous life means not following some church or some set of rules, but really listening to that inner spirit within yourself that will tell you right from wrong. Um, I, he has a whole bunch of stuff in here about intuition and um, following that part. And and there's that quote, um, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he, so is he. Well, the heart is a cerebellum. The heart is not this pump that keeps our blood going that we call a heart, the true heart as we think. So are we in our hearts? That's the cerebellum. That's where our thoughts come from, either for righteousness or for evil, um, for service or selfishness. Um, if I can find that quote on intuition, I'll leave you with that. Because I just wanted to share a few little things that were on my mind, helped distract me from what's going on. Um, geez, I can't believe I didn't. I have the word intuition right next to it, so I could easily find it. Well, clearly I'm flipping in the wrong. That's crazy. Okay, um, one part about the seed. Okay, we were just talking about this. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The cerebellum is a heart-shaped, and Greek, and in the Greek is known as the heart. The organ that divides the blood was called the dividing pump. The seat of thought is the cerebellum. Our thoughts shape our lives. If we think continually below the solar plexus in the kingdom of earth, again, the solar plexus is the median um, of our body. The lower half below the solar plexus is the kingdom of earth or Egypt or Babylon. Um, and then above the solar plexus is the kingdom of heaven, the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. So if we dwell in thoughts of material pleasures, we become animal and materialistic. If we really desire the kingdom of heaven, we must think of the process that will enable us to realize it. When Jesus was born, they put him in swaddling clothes. Now the psychic germ is composed of concentrated essence of life and is covered by a gosmer capsule for protection. If this swaddling cloth is broken, the precious ointment is lost. It disintegrates and corrupts the blood. In order to save this germ of life, man must remember that as a man thinketh, so is he. While men must abstain entirely from sexual conduct, that's in the two and a half days, the moon is in the sun sign, he must also realize that he who looketh on a woman to lust after hath committed adultery with her in his heart. Um, and then it talks about envy, hatred, ambition, covetedness also will destroy this capsule that is the swaddling cloth that is protecting the seed. Um, and it will, if it destroys that, then, then the seed has been wasted and it corrupts the blood. Um, and alcohol talks about that. And gluttony, the same thing is um, with overeating. So there's the seven deadly sins and... Um, There's seven virtues with each one as well that get turned into um, the vices that get turned into virtues. If you work on saving this seed, that'll be another time. I don't want to find them <laughs> at the moment, but yeah, um, this process I think it just takes a commitment and um, commitment to yourself that you want to work towards something beautiful for yourself. Something that I know I can tell you in the six times that I've done it since November, um, physical things that have happened. My hair's gotten thicker. My hair's gotten longer. It's grown faster. Less has fallen out in the shower. That's just 
something, a change that I've noticed in my body. I have a peace with me that I don't get as angry. <sighs> I still get angry. I still have issues. I'm still human. I am not perfect yet, but, um, I'm definitely able to recognize my flaws a little bit faster and quicker, um, and not go down that road as quickly. Um, and then physically, like th the healing of my knee when I tore it in half the time took three weeks to completely heal rather than six, what the doctor said it would probably take. And I, I did the same injury when I was um, 32. I had just had my daughter. She was six months old. So yeah, I was 32 when I tore my meniscus and I couldn't heal it myself. So I was a lot younger, not aware of this process, obviously, and um, pretty much same as that tear. And I had to have surgery and so much physical therapy. It was a freaking nightmare. And I was so worried that that same thing was going to happen. And a week of bed rest and lots of energy work, fasting, preserving the seed, got me back on my feet in half the time. Um, to me, that's worth that's, that was a huge blessing for me. And that was worth keeping this up. Keep, keep trying with the oil and see. Plus I'm studying and that's never going to stop trying to learn more and understand more from different sources. And I appreciate the people who have shared different links about this process because I do go back and, and look at them and have read the information shared. So thank you for doing that. And adding to the dialogue because honestly this is something that is ancient hidden secret knowledge it's only going to resonate with people if they're ready for it and if they're not ready for it they won't sit through this they will turn it off or call it bullshit <laughs> which i've had people do and then uh you know move on so i don't feel any i don't feel bad about sharing this with people because if they're not ready they just won't hear it and if they're ready, we need more people waking up and understanding this process and finding the Christ within themselves, finding that peace in the kingdom of heaven within themselves and being their own savior. Um, so that's why I continue to share what I'm sharing. Plus, I'm on this journey. I, I don't know, you know, where things are going to end up. I did a, a lot of work last night with the pendulum. I love working with the pendulum and asking questions and, and just learning to read that energy. Um, and things are still up in the air with, with what we're going to be doing with our family, but I think we'll be here for at least another year till my daughter graduates. So that's good. Well, anyways, thanks for listening. That's all I wanted to share today and I'll say aho and goodbye.